As the recollected information states, a nearby resident could describe the events precisely and moreover wrote an accurate redication of the incident. Kaylee has always been an innocent lady, appearing to me very sweet and caring, since we used to be really close friends. My name is Brandon Davidson, and I also used to work with Kaylee in a local animal shelter. And telling by the usual behavior she used to show, the fact that I found out about all this nonsense truly stuns me. But I believe it. Ever since I understood her desperation, I can totally comprehend what this unexplainable situation, even though it goes beyond me. Well, there was this young lad, Nigel. I remember seeing him a couple of times, and although for Kaylee he seemed a promising man, I never trusted him. For some reason, I felt he wasn't so legit as he appeared to be. I even warned Kaylee about it, but she wouldn't listen. She was hopelessly in love with this guy. To be honest, the fact that he was so deeply in love with him, well, it made me a bit jealous. But just, just a bit. It, believe me. I've always thought Kaylee was, and maybe she still is under that dreadful hood I've been hearing about, a very beautiful girl, with her light brown hair, which she always displays in two low pigtails, and her glistening green eyes. Oh, those eyes. Anyways, I will never forget how they shone what happiness and joy to fill that lovely, generous heart of hers. Still, I could never tell myself that I was in love with her. However, this is not what the important thing is about. As I mentioned this man, Nigel, he worked as a local mailman and he was familiar with almost everyone in town. He was mostly recognized to be a ladies' man. Due to his attitude in front of a large amount of women, which at the beginning I consider reasonable, Nigel was a tall, handsome man, not very robust, with stylish black hair and pale blue eyes. I remember his figure pretty clearly. After some months, Kaylee, of course, tried to persuade him, and which she wasn't really good at because she was really shy. And luckily for her, they both ended up dating. Yes, dating. It wasn't a serially serious relationship for any of them. But they liked each other very much. Even though I felt really glad for Kaylee because she had finally got to date the man she had been liking for a long time, I still could not find the way on how to trust this man. He seemed to hide something. Something that not me or Kaylee were aware about. She got to know Nigel really well. His hobbies, what he liked, what he didn't like, his lifestyle, and I even heard some rumors of that they already displayed their affection in more physical terms, if you catch my drift. She told me he really liked poetry, and he even wrote some himself spontaneously. He used to go every day on the evenings to the local park where most of the residents visit daily, but not around night. But he did. Remember this because it's really important for some certain events later. This is when the story gets interesting. Kaylee decided to go to the park around 8 p.m. hoping to meet Nigel there, where he would be writing his inspirational poetry. So she headed to the park eagerly to see her beloved boyfriend, who made her realize she had fallen on the hole of love really hard. As she knew he walked around with his notebook in his hand and a pen, she glanced at every shadow that passed by, verifying if they looked like a human figure holding something. Yes, she was trying to look for him by his shadow, instead of his features. Every time she saw a shadow on the concrete path of the park, she would follow its pace, to then look closely at the figure and check if it was him or not. After a while of anxious looking, Kaylee began to hear some giggling of a woman, who didn't sound so old, around her early 20s, and a familiar manly chuckle. She totally knew that manly voice, and so she looked over to the side, where the voices seemed to come from. She could devise some shadows moving smoothly, so she walked silently closer to a tree to peep her head to the side and see the two people whose voices belonged. What she saw utterly paralyzed her. Her people went as small as it humanly possible. Her heart skipped a beat, the tip of her fingers twirled in a twitch. She could feel the veins of her eyes throbbing as soon as she could see the betrayal seen in front of her. Illuminated by the light of the moon was providing tears streamed down her eyes and her mouth gaped. She could see Nigel, but he wasn't alone. He was with another woman. And no, she wasn't just talking to him, they were kissing. But this wasn't just an innocent lip touch, the woman's tongue was locked down Nigel's throat already. Kaylee could immediately notice he was corresponding as well, and of course enjoying it. A naughty smile was planted on both of their faces. Kaylee, after staring at them for a long seconds, started to realize she actually knew the lady. Her name was Priscilla. P 
Priscilla D. Alicard. She saw her a couple of times at the establishment across the street from the animal shelter where she worked, a party planning offices. Priscilla's name was written on a lot of posters due to the party planning company her mother owned was really famous in the whole state. Priscilla was one of those typical spoiled blondies with good bodies and life in pink. She was popular, but most of her admirers secretly hated her, and even though she still remained with her reputation high, however, Kaylee had always been indifferent about all that. Back to the heartbreaking scene, Kaylee could not move still. She couldn't help but to start sobbing loudly as the tears flooded down her now boiling cheeks, staining them deep black lines because she had put on mascara, which looked really attractive on her eyes. After she could snap out of her shocking trance, she managed to turn around slowly and then run away from the park. As Kaylee could feel light drops of water touching her hands as she ran, she thought it had started raining. Which wasn't the case, she pulled up her hood to protect herself from the downpour. It wasn't actually raining, she felt drops over her because she ran next to a house where an old lady was watering her plants, and some water had accidentally splashed her lightly. Surprisingly, instead of heading her own house, as to spend some time all by herself, she visited me. Kaylee ran quickly towards me at my front door and bent over for a moment, resting her hands on her knees. As she panted heavily for running so much, she then stood straight up and banged the door with her fist frustratedly. Come on, it's raining, Brandon! She complained loudly from outside the door. Unfortunately, I was taking a shower, but her pounding on the door was so loud that I saw myself forced to get out of the shower, wrap a towel around my body, and rush to the door. I opened the door suddenly after unlocking it and widened my eyes a bit as I noticed it wasn't raining a single bit. What the hell? It's not ra- I raised an eyebrow and started to reply to her complaints, but something else caught my attention instantly. I've never experienced such unbelievable and terrifying sight until that moment right there. Even though Kaylee was in a deep trance of sorrow, her eyes showed something else. As she was wearing her hood, her face could not be seen, just an empty black space. But her eyes, those white and red eyeballs, were shining. The red veins from her eyes stood out so much they were forming some sort of crimson roots on her eyes, and those that are as well glistened red. After I stared at her for some moments, I snapped out of my shock day slumber and pulled at her arm, bringing her in and closing the door behind me. I then pushed down her hood to gaze an even more dreadful sight. It wasn't what I would call a supernatural at all, but for me, that I have known her for a long time, it was painful to see her like that. I could see two black lines traced down her cheeks. Her skin was paler than usual. Her eyes had lost the beautiful iris they used to have. The red lipstick she wore on her lower lip was almost completely cracked, and for some reason her teeth seemed a bit sharper than they actually were. What? What? What happened to you, Kaylee? What? What's going on? I questioned her in a rather muttering tone as I tilted my head and stared at her with mine much closer to hers. She grit her teeth harshly and sobbed. I a little more, then took a deep breath and began to tell the whole story of the recent events. I was utterly amazed and now relieved that I was right when I thought Nigel wasn't one of those to trust. Alright, Kaylee, I know this must be really hard for you to get over with, but listen, you must let things go and always look forward, okay? I put both of my hands on her shoulders and looked at her straight in the eyes, waiting for her to reply. She looked back into mine, then lowering her head and nodding. I know nothing after that moment. She opened the door, my front door and left with no word. Although what she did may not have been captured by these eyes, it was by other eyes. I'm not stupid. I asked another witness later on. Kaylee put on her hood again and now determined and clenched her fist. This isn't over, Nigel. I'll follow you, she muttered to herself and felt how the veins on her eyes kept spreading, now seeming to form some sort of dark red rings around her small pupil. She refused to keep feeling sorrow and paying attention at the scar on her heart. The betrayal left, so she smiled as wide as she could. Literally, her smile appeared to be out of this dimension. Although neither of these are humanly possible, there are many witnesses who could prove seeing it. Nigel and Priscilla were leaving the park at that moment, but both by opposite paths so they wouldn't be busted. But Priscilla didn't know how careful she should have been because Kaylee was approaching. The blonde stopped at the big fountain at the center of the park and used her hand to bring some water to her mouth briskly. But when she turned around, she wasn't expecting to be so dreadfully scared. She saw a figure a few inches away from her. It was staring at her with wide eyes, tiny pupils, 
surrounded by dark blood red circles. A smile that reached higher than the average human mouth does, as if somebody had ripped the lips open wider. The mysterious figure suddenly grasped Priscilla by the neck before she could scream in horror and sank her head into the fountain. Even though Priscilla struggled to break free, the grasp was overhumanly strong. After the seconds Priscilla's lungs could resist, she drowned. Kaylee didn't hesitate to leave the young corpse floating on the crystalline water of the fountain freely. She simply turned around, and as soon as she could devise shadows at the distance, she dashed following them. The man whose shadow belonged, Nigel, stood still for a moment as he heard some twigs rustling nearby. He raised an eyebrow, curious, and turned his head to the pair of bushes next to him. After staring at them and not hearing a thing, he looked at the concrete of the path and gazed at his own shadow. He staggered backwards, suddenly and with fear as he saw two eyes. Two big, white, and blood-red eyes. Also an exaggerated mouth shape and a pointy teeth. Nigel gasped loudly and rubbed his eyes abruptly, thinking it was just his imagination. But it wasn't. When he looked at his shadow again, it seemed pretty normal. He lifted his arm. The shadow followed. He stomped his foot on the ground. So did the shadow. He suddenly heard a low, mischievous chuckle from behind him. But he shook this off because he thought it was all in his mind. But what he was sure it wasn't mind tricks was the cold breathing he felt on his neck he stood completely still frozen he could encourage himself to move a single muscle you broke my heart now it's my turn to break yours nigel freezing chills ran down nigel's spine when he heard that mischievous soul-ripping voice whispering next to his ear it was kaylee of course she grasped him by the shoulders and turned around to face him to then instantly punch him flatly across the face. He let out a grunt in sudden pain, to then and he, pin, he pinned against the tree by the neck. Kaylee held him hardly against the tree, tightening her grip on his neck. K -K 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 Kaylee! Nigel struggled to get rid of her grasp, also trying to pronounce her name, but having difficulties due to the big lack of air. She was utterly puzzled by the fact he could recognize her somehow. However, she would never let go of him. Without a second thought, she began kneeing Nigel's crotch with all hand pulse repeatedly, making him groan loudly each time. As she was hanging his neck with her left hand, she proceeded to pounce his chest with her right fist all at, at all strength, soon making his heart break apart, and stopped beating. Nigel's body went utterly numb. Kaylee released her grip on him, and he fell slowly to the ground, his body sliding down the tree in the process. She wiped the blood oozing from Nigel's mouth with her thumb, and then rubbed it against her lower lip to fix the red color of her lipstick that was cracked. Kaylee chuckled, and according to what a witness said, her figure vanished into the shadows that laid on the grass of the park. That certain resident who claims the fact that Kaylee's body faded is now in the local mental clinic and under medication. Still, I, Brandon, believed him. Brandon is said to continue his life, as if he had never known Kaylee, and as if they had never been friends at all. He also refused to leave any other comments. Although he feels now oh, there is an empty space in his life, he goes on with his life as a journalist, without his old friend.